Yo, what advice would you give some people entering the sports betting world right now? Uh, it's something that we mentioned before. Live betting is something that's that that has come to you know you know the limelight with now everyone being able to legally do it. I don't know. A piece of advice that I've got is like don't blindly live bet. You know, unless you're getting really good information from someone you're tailing and that's a great capper or, you know, unless you're getting some great info or you're maybe watching the game yourself, like don't blindly live bet a game. Just I think that's yeah kind of an example of a live bet that I would have done, even though it didn't work out, would be the Colts with the Jaguars. Yes. Colts are a 15 point favorite. They fall down 10 nothing, 13 nothing. In the first quarter, that's a scenario where you would look to the live bet because now the Colts probably become a three point favorite. So you have 12 point value in your favor. Yeah. So in that scenario, yeah, do it. Obviously, it's not always going to work out, right? Chargers yesterday, when they're down with eight minutes left, they're a 16 to one underdog to win that game. Yeah. That would be something I would sprinkle a little bit. The Niners, too, at one point when they were well, down. Well, the Niners. The Niners, no. I would say no to that because they were the dog coming in. Okay. And also, they showed nothing to you in that first half that made you feel confident. Did the Colts either, though? Because I was going to say the same thing. If you watch the Colts game from the beginning, the Jaguars... Very fair. It's it's the same thing. That's why... We, what about the argument that I'm going to make right now of the, the level Colts of were competition? Out. Where like it's the Jaguars as opposed to it being the Rams who needed that game also. Yeah. Look, obviously... It's just kind of a call, a proceed with caution, I guess. Yeah. Right. Say, you know, we never tell anyone to do it with, with what's in their pockets. We just try. No, to, and that's yeah. and that's something I like that you mentioned that because that's something that uh, us two have had discussions in the past, like via text and even this weekend about like unit betting, right? Yeah. Like that that becomes something where if you enter a field and you're not familiar with it, and someone starts dropping big words that describe that field or it's a popular term in that field like value right like you'll hear someone in sports betting say oh there's value there and if you ever sit back and ask them like hey man what do you mean by value do you even know what value is there's a lot of people that don't know what value is value is all subjective the same way what unit betting is to what you do so if Impy's a handicapper right you usually the real handicappers they have power rankings to their teams mm -hmm. They have what a team should be favored on a neutral as opposed to not a neutral. So when Impy says, oh, the Bengals are a six-point favorite, I think there is value on the Raiders plus six because I think this line should be minus four. Follow? Yeah. So there's no value on the Bengals. The other side of it, a unit bet. You might hear someone say, oh, I'm up 300 units. All right, but what's your what's your unit size? Unit size is what your average bet is. On the Patreon stuff, everybody knows, say it on every episode or in the Discord. Yo, we don't I don't do units, but every bet is a hundred dollars and our favorite bet is two hundred dollars. Yeah. So at the end of the year when you see what the ATS record is, what the money one is, you know what the like the 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 key is and the legend is. Yeah. No, when I think of units, I just think of to your point, what's your what's your average bet size? You have to know that because it puts everything else into context. Yeah, and it definitely helps with how much to wager. It helps you understand how much you should be wagering. You know, when I think, you know, if I'm gonna place, you know, maybe four college basketball bets in the night, right? You could also think of it from the perspective of how confident are you in them. You know, if you're placing four bets, maybe you're gonna throw maybe you know, a half a unit on each game and you're really only wagering two units in the four games because mm. you're not, you know, you, you don't feel as strong, uh, you know, about these games or whatever the case is, right? There's right, right, right. a couple of different reasons why. So to me, the, the, the idea of units more so gives me a better understanding of how, how much I should be betting, you know, maybe if I'm tailing someone as well, you know, it's obviously don't just blindly tail someone. Right. If, if you're tailing someone that's a great handicapper and they give out a pick or two and you, and you really like it, that's awesome. You don't have to blindly follow that person's pick. You know, you can do some due diligence your own of yourself and then, you know, kind of come up to come up with your own conclusion. That's another piece of advice, too, I guess. Right. I don't know if we kind of touched on that is is, you know, definitely have some favorites. I have some favorite handicappers of mine as well. And, um, 
but again, I'm not, you know, blindly, you know, going in guns blazing, um, you know, following everything what that they do. Um, so that's another kind of little piece of advice as well.